Hi everyone, thanks for clicking on the video. Today I'm just going to go over a fixed asset depreciation schedule that I put together. And what this schedule does is it really automates uh, recording and keeping track of your fixed assets. So what I have here is an Excel spreadsheet with, it's got four tabs. The first tab is the setup tab where we're just going to enter some basic information. It's got a depreciation entry tab that helps you record your entry for your month-end accounting close process. It's got a fixed asset summary tab which summarizes all of your fixed assets by category. It's got cost of your fixed asset, the accumulated depreciation, your net book value, and then your depreciation expense by category. And what this schedule does, or what the summary does, it allows you to drill down. Uh, so it comes with uh, all of this information by year up to five years and then you can drill down into quarter and within each quarter you can drill down into each month by clicking on the plus signs. So I'm just going to leave this open for now and uh, just go to the next tab here. So this, this is the tab where you're really going to enter in all of your asset information. So there's a drop down here with the asset group and it's going to let you select your different categories for that asset and you're going to put a description here for that asset and your useful life will automatically populate and then you just have to add in the date that you place it into service and the cost of the asset and then over here it's going to calculate your prior accumulated depreciation and all of the depreciation expense for that asset up to 15 years. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to walk through an example of how to set up the file and how to enter a couple assets so that you can see how it works. So I'm going to start with the setup and here I'm just going to enter my company name. Uh, we'll just put Accounting Excel for this example. And the next thing we're going to do is just start, uh, we're going to name our categories. So the first category I'm going to put in is land. And then next I'm just going to put in buildings. And we'll put in leasehold improvements. Next I'll put in computer equipment. And furniture and fixtures. Okay, so those are the categories that I'm going to use for this example. You can put in up to seven categories. I'm just going to use five for this example. Um, so since land is not depreciable, I'm just going to put a zero for land for the useful life. And the useful life, you can, you know, whatever your company policy is or whatever, whatever you think the asset category should have as a useful life, um, you're going to put that in here. So for buildings, I'm going to put in 25 years. Leasehold improvements, I'm going to put in 15 years. Uh, let's see, computer equipment, I'm going to put in 5 years. And furniture and fixtures, I'm going to put in 7 years. So once I have my setup done, you'll be able to see that it carries forward to these other tabs. So if I click on the depreciation entry tab, it's going to put in my company name up here. And on the fixed assets summary, it puts in my company name here. The other thing on the setup tab is you want to put in the date that you want the schedule to start. So this is going to be the first day or the first month that it starts recording your depreciation expense on the schedule. So what you want to do is you want to you want to start this in January because the way that the file is set up, it's always going to start with quarter one um, on your summary. So whatever year you're going to start, you want to enter in. January 31st of whatever year. So let's just say that we want to make this 2019. We'll go 1, 31, 2019. And then that's going to populate the rest of the schedule so that it begins with January 2019. And it's also going to populate the depreciation schedule so it starts with January 2019. So once you have the setup done and complete, the next thing that you want to do is enter your 
assets. So now that we've done our setup, we can we have a drop down here, and it's going to allow us to select our category. So the first thing we're going to put in is our land, and we'll just put a description in here. Uh, 1749 market. It's automatically going to populate our useful life based on what we entered. The next thing it's we're just going to put in our um, date and service. So for this, we're just going to put uh, we'll put in two twenty eighteen. And next, we're just going to put in the cost of the land. So let's put in two two three two seventy nine. And since land's not typically depreciated, we are going to not see anything populated for the depreciation. So the next thing, next thing we want to put in is put in our building. So this is going to be the 1749 market building. And you can see that it automatically calculates the useful life of 25 years. Uh, we're going to place this in a service after we built this building, so we're going to put this in a service 3-2018, or 3-2019, let's go with that, and put the cost in, so let's just put in 425, 25-452, so now it's going to calculate our depreciation expense for that building on a monthly basis based on the number of days uh, in each month. So you can see in March it's going to start because that's the, that's the when we place the asset in the service and it's going to start calculating the depreciation for that asset. So just as in another example we'll put in uh, we'll put in some computer equipment and we'll just call this computer equipment. It's got a useful life of five years based on what we entered in the setup tab and let's say that we purchased this before our schedule started so let's just go uh, 5, 25, 2017. Put our amount in. We'll just put in 17, 28. So now you can see it calculates the prior accumulated depreciation and then starts calculating the depreciation on a monthly basis once the schedule starts. So the next thing, I'll just put in another example. Um, we'll put in furniture and fixtures. Let's call this furniture. And start this on six. Oh, let's just go with five, five, 15. 2019. Put in an amount, 17,000. So you can see now that it starts calculating that depreciation starting in May. So that's the first thing you want to do is you want to enter on all your assets, put in the put in the dates, put in the cost, and make sure that all of this is populated. Now this will allow you to populate and it's formatted to go down through 100 items. But if you need more, the spreadsheet will allow you to go ahead and put in 1,000 without changing any of the formulas. So if you need to add more, you just copy down the formulas to up to 1,000 rows, and this spreadsheet will still work. So the next thing that you need to do, um, well, you don't really need to do anything else. Everything else is populated for you. So you just go to the fixed asset schedule, and then you can see here that everything's been populated with the cost, accumulated depreciation, net book value, and it's calculating your monthly depreciation expense for each month. It shows you exactly where you stand all the way up through the year 2023. Um, and if you need to go longer than that, you can either copy the information and extend this schedule, or you can go back to the setup and start a different year. Uh, so two options there. And once everything's been entered, you just come here to your depreciation entry, and it's going to give you the entry for your month end close. So for January 2019, this is your depreciation expense entry that you would enter into your accounting system. 
and you can see that it matches our entry for January on our schedule 303 and 30267 here so if we want to change this we're going to come in here for February and do our February month and close we enter in 228.19 and it's going to give you the entry for February want to if you want to close March, enter in 331.19. It's going to give you your entry for March, and you'll see that it matches your schedule. So that's it. That's the entire fixed asset schedule. Like I said, really easy. Once you get it, every all of your assets entered, it populates everything for you. You can drill down. You can see exactly where you stand with your fixed assets at all times and it's really easy. Available at the Accounting Excel store. I'll leave a link in the description to the schedules uh, download. Um, and I hope you think it's helpful and we'll see you all next time.